Good evening and welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Adam and I'll be your moderator. Tonight, I'd like to welcome Dr. Michael Snyder, along with one of Henry Schein's CAD CAM training specialists, Don Pizzuti, as they will be discussing 3M dental CAD CAM blocks and cements. At any point during the webinar, if you have a question, please type it into the Q&A section of your control panel and we'll reply via email within two business days. Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation, live or on demand, and this webinar is sponsored by 3M. Dr. Snyder and Don, welcome. So today, I would just like to say good afternoon to everyone who's joining, and Dr. Snyder, thank you. We're going to be discussing the 3M dental CAD CAM blocks and cements, as Adam previously mentioned. We're also going to be talking about the applications, innovations, and then Dr. Snyder is going to go into some great detail with some case studies. My name is Don Pizzuti. I am a CAD CAM integration specialist with Henry Schein. I am also a registered dental hygienist with over 20 years of experience in CAD CAM dentistry. As you can see in my bio, I have a lot of experience in different areas of dentistry. This doesn't make me an expert on anything. It just means that I'm old. Dr. Snyder and I will go through the benefits of different products from 3M, but we're gonna be focusing a lot on 3M zirconia. So the products that we're gonna be talking about is the chairside zirconia, 3M's Lava Ultimate, and then the Paradigm MZ100. And Dr. Snyder, again, is gonna go into great detail about the 3M zirconia. So the 3M zirconia, it has been designed for a single unit crown and then also for a three unit bridge. What's nice about this material, it has a high strength and the aesthetics are pleasing. And the flexural strength of this material is a thousand megapascals. And that's in a fast firing cycle with the speed fire. With this material, you have two size options. So you have a 20 millimeter block that's for your crowns. And then you also have a 39 millimeter block that's for your bridges. And the reason these blocks are larger is that's just the, shrink the shrinkage factor within the firing cycle of the material. There are eight shade options available, and these shade options match the Vita Classic shade guide. So Dr. Snyder, when you're selecting shades, are there any helpful hints that you have for selecting the shades? Sure, we'll go over this a little bit later in the presentation, but most of the time I'm hand polishing, or when I say I, I mean my team or assistants are hand polishing these restorations after firing. And I find that the hand polish restorations tend to be pretty true to the Vita Shade uh, system. However, if you're gonna be glazing these restorations, I find that those come out a little higher in value. So if we decide we are going to glaze a zirconia restoration, usually we'll step down one shade uh, just because the glaze does make it appear more bright or higher value in the mouth. Wonderful, thank you. So with the chair-side zirconia, we're able to use this in the family of CEREC materials and units. So the scanners, we're going back all the way to the blue pan, you can integrate this material, and then up to the current version of the prime scan. The material is also present from versions 4.6 or greater. And the material can be milled in multiple milling units, such as the MCX, the MCXL, and then our latest greatest version, which is the prime mill. Therefore, all of these are compatible with the Cerex Speedfire furnace. So it's just one big nice family for all these materials and different units that we have. So this is just an overview of our workflow and what we're looking at when we're using the zirconium material. So you're really going to be spending minimal time scanning. You're looking about 30, 40 seconds. The design of the restoration with the latest versions of software, you really should be spending about three minutes. And we're looking at just the fissure, the occlusal surface, then going down to the contours. And then the last thing that we ever wanna check is the interproximal contacts. When it's milling, we're gonna be doing a dry milling cycle. And that's gonna be about 10 minutes. 
Then with the sintering oven or your speed fire furnace, you're gonna be spending about 12 to 30 minutes depending on the size of the restoration. And then once we've completed the sintering cycle, we'll be spending about five minutes polishing or if you decide to do an additional glaze, you're looking at 10 to 15 minutes and then another five minutes for cementation. Does that sound like your workflow? If we just do the polish, Dr. Steiner? Yeah, I think that's pretty similar. I, zirconia is such an easy material to polish and we'll go over you know, the steps in the armamentarium that we use here in the practice, but five minutes is, uh, is actually pretty long, I think, to polish these. These are, they polish really well and the bonding process or cementing them uh, is, is much easier than with glass ceramics. So uh, what 3M has to offer with the Reliax Ultimate um, or Reliax Universal Cements, even with their looting cements that's available to use with uh, the Zirconia products makes delivery super, super simple. Great. So now I'm gonna just touch on a little bit of the firing options. So with the speed fire furnace, you have a fast centering time with the zirconia of approximately 20 minutes. And that's for your more thin wall restorations or crowns. And you're looking at about 1.2 millimeters or less. If your crown is thicker than 1.2, then that's just gonna increase the firing time to maybe about 22 minutes. But you don't have to worry about adjusting any parameters in the software or on the speed fire as the information is being sent from the unit to the milling unit, then it's also relayed to the speed fire and those adjustments will be made and the times will be adjusted according to the, the size of your restoration or your thickness. You also have the ability to fire this restoration in other sintering furnaces, such as your program at CS4. What I do recommend is if you do have a program at CS4, that you have your local IVACAR rep come into the office and do a training with you. You wanna just make sure that everything is set up properly for that furnace, your firing times, what you'll be using. And then they also will do a training on staining glaze if you choose to do that. So I'm just gonna talk about now about the restoration once it comes out of the furnace. So you wanna make sure, and I have to say this, that the restoration has been fully cooled before you touch it. These restorations come out at three, almost 3000 degrees. So do not grab that restoration until it has fully cooled because you will get burned. I've seen multiple clinicians burn themselves with this restoration and it literally just sticks to your fingers as you grab it or they grab it and it goes flying across the room. So I've seen it done a couple times and we just wanna make sure that it has fully cooled before you grab that restoration. Have you grabbed that, Dr. Snyder? No, it's, it's glowing orange. So I, I learned my lesson with the glass <laughs> ceramics, but yeah, I've seen multiple people at trainings do the same. So we always try to warn them to stay away. Yeah, it's, it's hard. You wanna to touch it, you wanna grab it as soon as it comes out, but, but you gotta resist. So when you're using this material and other materials, you should always be using proper PEPE. So you wanna make sure you have your gloves and your mask and your glasses or your goggles on. And when you have the option to stain or glaze or just polish, and right now I'm just gonna talk about polishing only. So, and Dr. Snyder, you can jump in here if you wanna add anything that we use the twist polishing burrs or the soft bristle brush. And then when you're using a soft bristle brush that we add a diamond impregnated polishing paste. Does that sound about yeah, right? I, I mean, I think the key here, right, is we do a little bit of pre-polishing of zirconia when it's in its green state or before it's centered. That's gonna get rid of a lot of the burr marks and things. You guys will see that later in the presentation. Um, and using this uh, diamond impregnated polishing paste is great, but that's after centering. So we don't wanna use that in the green state, those wheels will just kind of tear right through zirconia before it's centered because it is so soft and chalky at that point. And then if you choose to add a staining glaze, you will do this and then place it back into the furnace for a glazing cycle. And I know Dr. Snyder is gonna show you the differences between a polish and a glaze at the end of the presentation. But once you've selected your polish and or glazing and it's complete, then you need to pre-treat the restoration. So we're gonna sandblast the internal surface with 50 microns of aluminum oxide at two bars or 30 PSI. 
And this will just create a matte finish on that intaglio surface. And then you just wanna clean the restoration with alcohol and air, but make sure that there's no moisture or oil in your airline. And then your restoration is ready for cementation. So with the zirconia, you have some options for cements. So 3M offers the Relyx looting. And then this is like your five second tack cure. So it just allows for easy cement removal. It does have a high bond strength. It's virtually no post-op sensitivity. And what's nice about this is it is moisture tolerant, but it has a sustained fluoride release in it. The next product is 3M Scotch Bond. And Dr. Snyder, this is what you mostly use, correct? Yeah, I like this material, the, the Scotch Bond Universal Plus Adhesive along with the Scotch Bond and the Relax Universal Cement is a really nice combination. I, I try to keep bonding systems in my practice to a minimum just because it can be confusing for my team or my associates. So um, the Scotch Bond Universal Plus along with the Relax Universal Cement, um, these can be used for indirect restorations, direct restorations for composites if we're doing the bonding there. It's, it's just a nice material to have to kind of cover glass, ceramic, zirconia, um, you know, it, even gold restorations can be can be put on with this. So I, I like this material as a catch all. Great. And then the last product would be your Unisem 2. And then this product is just really eliminating your etching, priming and bonding steps. And again, it's moisture tolerant. So it's it's an easy delivery system. So the second product that I'm going to discuss today is 3M Lava Ultimate. And this is available for CEREC and the plan mill. So this material is actually a resin nano ceramic material. And what's nice about this is it is durable, but there's less wear on the opposing enamel and there's no need to do a firing cycle. So this will save you a little bit of time here. You can just polish this restoration and it has a very nice polish retention. These suggested applications would be inlays, onlays, and then veneers if you choose. This is also available in two sizes. So it comes in a size 12 and then also a 14L. And it comes in eight shade options, but within those eight shade options, you have the option to select a high or a low translucency, depending on where the restoration is gonna be placed in the mouth. So this material gives you the benefits of both a glass ceramic and a resin material. And for cements for this material, then we're um, gonna be discussing the Scotch Bond Universal Adhesive and then whatever cement that you choose to do with that as well. So this is a primer and adhesive all in one bottle like Dr. Snyder was saying. And again, he's gonna go into greater detail about the Scotch Bond. The last material that I'm gonna to discuss today is the Paradigm MZ100 block. So this was created by 3M from the Z100 restorative material. This is a composite block. So this was introduced back in the day when we all first started in the CEREC world over 20 years ago, this material was available. And what is nice is there is less occlusal Posing wear, sorry, I was having trouble getting that out. And then the applications would be any type of restoration, really your inlays, onlays, veneers or crowns. So we just call this our oldie but goodie. And again, now it's only available in one size. So it's a size 14, which that's pretty much gonna cover any type of single unit restoration in the mouth. And then there are six shade options and you can use it in the plan mill or in the CEREC units. And again, cementing this, an option would be your Relyx Unisem 2. So it's a strong self-adhesive resin cement. It's your etching and priming and bonding steps are all eliminated. And then like I was saying earlier, it's moisture tolerant. So it's just an ease of delivery. Anything you wanna add on the MZ100 or Oldie but Goodie block? No, I mean, composites box like that are great. I mean, you know, I, I, I hate spending time with Toffelmeyers and Paladins and rings and wedges and bands trying to do quadrants with composites are honestly, to me, quite difficult. So to be able to mill these out chair side and seat them is great. 
those materials mill in three or four minutes and I can seat them with, with really nice contours. And that's faster than what I could do if I was trying to do it layer by layer um, with my own two hands. So um, the efficiency of, of both of those hybrids, the Lava Ultimate and the MZ100 um, allows me to go do some other dentistry instead of you know having my head down doing two or three MODs back to back, which is um, which is not the most fun thing we can do uh, chair side. So I try to avoid it whenever possible. I mean, you could always squeeze in a little Botox in between too. Yeah, something like that. Or, you, you know, you're a hygienist, so they're always waiting for a check. You know how that is. So if I'm doing a bunch of composites, they're standing out my room pacing, waiting for me to come check a patient. So it allows me to get up and do that instead of being stuck uh, doing the composites. I've never had to wait on a dentist to do a check. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. That was my first lie of the day. So with this, I'm going to turn this over soon here to Dr. Michael Snyder, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of background. And you can see um, the beautiful photos that he takes with his staff. I love the pictures that I've, I've seen over the years with him and his staff. Um, they're just beautiful pictures. But Dr. Snyder completed his bachelor's degree in microbiology at Clemson University in South Carolina in 2005. He earned his Doctor of Dental Medicine degree from the Medical University of South Carolina in 2009. And he's been practicing dentistry in Greenwood since graduation. He has a team of 14 that are helping him within the practice and he does everything from general and cosmetic dentistry to Botox and sleep apnea. Dr. Snyder is a key opinion leader or influencer, what the millennials are calling everything now in the dental industry. And he practice is in an area of a city. The Greenwood is about 25,000 people. It's the 10th largest city in the state. I did some background on your town. So, and what is this annual South Carolina Festival of Flowers? Well, so that's our, our big festival here every year. It does actually bring some people to the town and you know, we are rural, that 29,000 is kind of the city proper, but because the market is so rural, our surrounding area is probably about 70, 75,000 people, but there's not that many providers or, or dentists here. So it does allow us to have a, a comprehensive practice where we're doing everything, like you say, from general dentistry to sleep apnea, we, you know, implants and all on floors and all that stuff is happening here daily. But I think what fascinates me the most about your town is actually the grocery store so that you can actually go to the store and you can buy your groceries on credit and not pay your bill till the end of the month. This just blows my mind. <laughs> I swear, I went and got my lunch before this webinar today. Walk over, got it, signed for it, and walked back out. And then I'll <laughs> pay at the end of the month. Just don't make that board of, of customers who don't pay. <laughs> no, that's why you always pay. You don't want your name up there. <laughs> so besides his busy professional life, he has two beautiful children, Reeves, who is seven, and James, who is five. The family enjoys lots of outdoor activities such as boating and hiking along Greenwood's 212 miles of lake shoreline. Mm -hmm. I've had the privilege of working with Dr. Snyder on multiple occasions over the years, and I really enjoy training alongside him. He has a great energy that is felt with that throughout the room. He is always willing to share his own personal experiences while being very comprehensive and detailed with the material. But most importantly, he takes the time to meet everyone in the room and address any questions or concerns that the t uh, room may have. So it's always a pleasure working with you, Dr. Snyder. And now I turn it over to you. Thank you. Okay. So again, Dawn, thanks for the introduction. Um, yes, this is my team uh, on the left and the picture of our practice on the right. Um, and, and I was joking with Dawn a little bit about hygienists always waiting for a check. But, you know, in our practice, uh, it's myself and my associate, Dr. Lindsay Fuquay, has been with us two years now. That's who you see in the middle of the screen. There's five hygienists and two of us. And without, you know, CAD CAM and without these materials we're going to talk about today, it would be near impossible for me to do the dentistry that we do. Um, but by working in this digital manner instead of analog, allows us to be efficient and uh, to be checking our patients instead of again, head down doing direct composites or temporaries and things like that. So let's talk a little bit about zirconia. I know that that's a big draw with CAD CAM now, especially to be able to do this chair side. Um, but there's, there's a little bit to know about zirconia. If you haven't got into it, there's obviously multiple forms. I'm sure you guys have 
obviously now heard of 3M chairside zirconia from the presentation. Um, people are probably relatively familiar with things like Bruxier zirconia that was marketed by Glidewell or maybe even Katana um, zirconia, which is a more, you know, considered, I guess, quote unquote, aesthetic or translucent zirconia. But where do those differences come from? And they, they all come from, you know, these Ys. And the Ys in zirconia is how much yttria is added to the different components. We all love zirconia because of its strength. And the strength comes from what you're seeing here, which is this tetragonal phase of zirconia. But depending on how much yttria is added, we could have a 3Y zirconia, and that's going to be your classic Bruxier type of zirconia or seric zirconia, very opaque, but very strong. Uh, then you can have a 5Y, depending on how much yttria is added. And that's the more aesthetic zirconias or you know, considered maybe more aesthetic, but these tend to drop a good bit in terms of flexural strength. Instead of being you know, that 11, 1200, 1000 megapascals, we're getting closer into the 700 range. And the 3M zirconia that we're gonna discuss today is a 4Y. So basically kind of a, a middle of the road between the two where we're getting the strength that 1000 megapascals um, from the tetragonal phase, but we're also getting some of that translucency and aesthetics that we would see with a 5Y. So again, you know, this is what we're seeing from 3M is no one can use this pure, you know, zirconia oxide. It, it, it's just unusable in the mouth. But when we add a, a little bit of yttria, we start getting again to that Bruxier type. This is the ones that you saw, you know, advertised years ago where they would mill the crown out and, you know, someone would stomp on it or hit it with a hammer into a two by four, super strong material. But honestly, in my office, I could only use it on maybe second molars. It was just so bright, so opaque. And I didn't love it for that. Um, and then now we've progressed to these high translucency, five wise zirconias that are aesthetic, but they're in that kind of seven to 800 maybe megapascal range, which honestly is approaching um, pretty close to what we're getting with glass ceramics. And so if I'm using zirconia in my office, I'm usually using it for a reason. Maybe it's from a mineral reduction standpoint, or maybe it's from a tough area to bond. And so I wanna have those high strength characteristics and I'm not willing to give up, you know, a couple hundred megapascals um, to have something considered, quote unquote, again, more aesthetic. So that allows me to really work with 3M zirconia and, and get kind of a blend of both worlds. So, you know, this is just an example of how this tetragonal phase works. What we're seeing in, in again, the tetragonal phase is more uh, a, a bigger issue with the 3Y and then the 4Y. And this phase continues to go down as we add more yttria. But it does have this kind of... Uh, crack propagation hindrance. So what you're seeing is as a crack happens, these, these tetragonal phases are helping hold each other together. And that's what allows us to get, again, that thousand megapascals um, of compression and flexural strength. But you know what happens as we increase the cubic phase, which is where the high translucency comes from, it allows the light to pass through. So if you're looking at this kind of disc of the 3Y, the classic zirconia, you can see that those bands barely really show through. And that's why we had those opaque type of zirconias initially. Um, and then in the high, uh, high aesthetic, but lower strength, you're seeing more of that translucency, more of that black line showing through. And it's because the light passes through that cubic phase just easier um, than it does through the tetragonal phase of zirconia. So where are we on the scale? You know, Seri zirconia, Bruxier zirconias, depending on how they're handled and how they're milled um, and the thickness of them are approaching that 12 to 1400. So, you know, very far to the left, super strong material, but maybe not so aesthetic. Um, then as we increase the yttria composition, we start getting to um, this 4% or 4Y type of zirconia. Again, that's what I'm getting from 3M zirconia. And I, and I like that. I'm keeping above a thousand megapascals for my flexural strength, but I'm getting a lot of translucency. And you'll see in these couple of photos and the cases that we have that they look quite nice. I think they're on par with you know, low translucency Emaxes and things like that. They're not gonna be the same as a high translucency ceramic or true glass ceramic, but they are gonna be aesthetic enough for me to even use um, in some premolar areas and definitely first molars and second molars without question. You know, and, and again, here we're looking at the megapascals and what happens and you're gonna see that marked drop from the Seric zirconia or the Bruxier zirconia, the three Y type of zirconia. Um, and you see where we are with Katana. Um, you know, dropping to about 800. The Emax on the side of this being listed at 400 is Emax that is not really bonded. The bonded Emaxes are going to be closer to the five to 600 megapascal range. Um, Emax does have an indication for 
direct cementation, but it has to have at least two millimeters of occlusal thickness to fit into that for the IFUs. So, you know, again, just benefits of having the translucency of that 4Y, but the strength at the same time makes me confident that even if I'm at, you know, a little under a millimeter of occlusal thickness, I know that these restorations just, um, from the 3M chair size are going to survive without much issue in the posterior. And translucency comparisons here, you know, what does this really mean? I, I don't know that any of us are very familiar with translucency 1-CR and what that means, but you can see that as we have, again, increased the yttria composition, the cherosite zirconia does have that translucency there. And to me, it, it looks natural in the mouth. So, you know, why do we choose zirconia? And, and I think the first thing that we have to realize with zirconia is how it's actually processed. If you're getting zirconia from your lab now, you're using CAD CAM. The, the only way to process or to generate a zirconia restoration is by milling. But the unique components of the milling process of zirconia is the fact that one, it's roughly 23 to 28% larger when it's milled. Um, so it allows these smaller burrs to really get in and, and finely mill margins and the intaglio surfaces of the crown. If you look at this crown on the left, this is obviously an Emax crown, it's the classic purple color there. But when this is milled with the diamond burrs um, in a milling unit, those diamonds have very specific diameters. And so if there's any sharp points, whether it be on a custom abutment or a prep, the software in the milling unit has to over mill the intaglio of that crown so that the restorations will seat. We don't see that with zirconia. The carbide burrs that are in the milling units are very fine. They're much smaller than the diamonds when we're grinding ceramics. And so you look at this intaglio surface, it looks pristine. And any little chipping that you've sometimes seen at glass ceramic margins, you're not gonna see that with zirconia either. One, it's a very soft material, so the carbides can, can mill it very easily. But two, it, it's very large, right? So you can have these very fine margins, they're milled, at such a larger 23, again, 28%, somewhere in there, depending on the zirconia magnification factor. And then the oven, when this centers and it shrinks, the, the margins are just pristine. You know, and obviously we can have conservative preparations with 3M zirconia, you know, the recommendation because we're still above that um, 1000 megapascal in flexural strength, we can get by with 0.8. Um, I usually tell dentists one millimeter because if I tell them 0.8 then they're gonna prep to like 0.5, so I, I, they always are you know, under reducing. So I, I still say a millimeter to be able to get some decent anatomy and things like that. But um, these materials and these margins that you're gonna get with the zirconia doesn't have to be a perfect chamfer, can be kind of more of a very light chamfer, it could be a heavy chamfer um, and the zirconia is gonna fit it, not quite as particular as what you would have with a glass ceramic. And then the ease of delivery. I, I think to me, this is one of the biggest benefits of zirconia, you know, so you may like um, resin modified glass ionomer, the cement you see there on the right side, that's super simple. It's very moisture tolerant. You know, you don't have to have a, a pristine prep to, to put this restoration in. And, and these don't usually have too much sensitivity because we're not bonding, um, which can cause some sensitivity. But I really like the relaxed universal resin cement and uh, bonding it with the Scotch Bond Universal. <clears throat> the film um, thickness or, or the viscosity of this bonding agent is, is nice and thin, doesn't feel very viscous on the tooth. And then I like the little tips that come with the Relax Universal um, new cement because I don't feel like half the cement is in the tip um, like we have with a lot of other resins. The other thing that's nice with the Relax Universal cement that you see in the middle is when that cap is removed, there's a little bladder system that goes ahead and closes off both accesses. Um, you guys all know when you take a cap off or sometimes your assistants are maybe leaving the cap on so that it's not open to air in between patients. Here, you remove the cap, you can wipe the whole thing down and the little rubber gaskets seal it immediately. So, um, you know, the relaxed looting is great for cementation, but not obviously great for bonding. The relaxed universal can be used in all of those manners. I can use it with the universal plus adhesive in a bonding manner where I've applied the bond to the tooth and then the cement. I can use it as a self-adhesive where I'm not doing anything to the tooth, but putting the relaxed universal inside the restoration, seating and tack curing. Um, so I, I like the one system, but you know, again, the nice thing with zirconia, you can pick and choose what you like to do and, and how you want to deliver it. So let's go through the process a little bit. We're gonna talk about milling, centering, finishing, and, and then finally deliver these restorations. And I think that's probably um, more applicable to, to your practice and to see how this process and how these products fit in. And you know, I want to talk about the prime mill and the speed fire oven. The prime mill, um, 
we have had in the practice since this release. Um, you know, I, it's one of the three mills that we have. We're doing so much CAD CAM dentistry here that between the two daughters, those three mills are just running all day long. Um, and zirconia really wasn't a, a big part of my practice until the addition of the Speedfire oven. Um, previously, we could mill zirconia with the M6Ls, but sensoring times before the Speedfire oven was released were seven, eight hours. And that didn't make a lot of sense for me since we're doing chair side, we were doing a lot of glass ceramics, but now that we got these centering times down to under 30 minutes and sometimes under 20, depending on the thickness of the crown, I can have a patient in and out in an hour and a half, no problem with a final zirconia restoration, which makes the workflow um, very easy for, for both parties. So, you know, with the prime mill, we are gonna have three different milling options. Um, fast mill, which is what you're seeing here, um, on the right, I can mill out a zirconia restoration in a little under five minutes. So this is just blazing fast. Um, it happens this way because the, the zirconia is so soft at this point. The carbide burrs have at it and, and get going. The prime mill actually does a touch process prior um, the minute you select the block. So that's happening early. That saves about a minute, minute and a half. And this thing can be you know, out of the mill, sprue off and going in the oven in, in less than maybe six or seven minutes from hitting mill on the um, prime scan. You can do a fine mill. You're gonna notice a little bit more anatomy here maybe. I don't think a lot. So I tend to not fine mill anything. Um, I, I don't see the benefit of it really. Maybe you'll say there's a couple of less surface scratches but we're gonna polish those away anyway uh, before centering. So fine mill doesn't really have too much of a place in my office. And then there's an option for extra fine mill. And I do use this in my practice. You'll notice here, there's obviously much more occlusal anatomy um, already in, not gonna be as many surface scratches, but where I use this is for bridges. So I'm gonna use the fast mill anytime I'm doing a single unit. But if I'm doing zirconia bridges in my practice, I'm doing that on extra fine because those extra fine burrs can really go in and define those embrasures um, between the connectors and the pontic very well for me. And it saves me a little bit of chair time in doing so. So, you know, just comparing again, you can look at the surfaces here and see if you can really tell much difference. I don't see a whole lot of difference between fast and fine. Um, not, nothing for me to add on another, you know, 10, 11 minutes, but um, obviously the extra fine, you can notice again, the more occlusal anatomy, and that's going to be where I'm living for multiple units, right? Um, I guess if I'm doing a lot of, you know, posteriors one at one time, maybe the patient's being provisionalized and coming back, I could use extra fine on all those and get more anatomy, but, but most of the time only on, only on bridges. So how do we finish it? You know, these do have very large sprues on them. Um, I like to use a carbide burr. And again, anytime I say I, I'm referring to my team because I couldn't work without them. So you're seeing my assistant here um, remove the sprue and you're doing this on very, very slow speed with this fine carbide burr. I, you'll see the gloves in the photo, I always like to do this over some form of evacuation and with a mask on, this is, you know, zirconia is a metal, this is metal particles kind of flying around. I, don't, I wouldn't want to lean over this and be breathing this in all day long, um, but you remove the sprue. And once you remove the sprue, we gotta go in and pre-polish. And, and I like these twist polishers from Mike Singer. I use the blue one. Um, and you do this again on slow speed. And this is just to remove those surface scratches. I'm gonna show you a photo in a minute where you're gonna see these scratches. If they're centered in to the crown, they're gonna be much more difficult to remove. So taking this small wheel around the surfaces into the occlusal groove, things like that early on, just makes for an easier restoration to finish overall. Um, I would caution you from using this too much on the interproximals. Um, at this point, again, zirconia is very soft and by taking this blue wheel into those interproximals, you may um, generate an open contact that you would not intend. So buckle surface, lingual surface, occlusal surface for sure. Um, interproximally, I may do very light polishing, but I'm not worried too much there. And then we got to clean it, right? So we use these kind of large horsehair bristle brushes, but that zirconia you saw in the previous photo, if we go you know, back just a little bit, you see all this dust flying around. Um, and if this is left on the surface of the crown, or if it's left on the intaglio of the crown, it'll kind of bake to it as it's centered. And you get these really chalky white spots throughout the restoration. So I always want to make sure this is cleaned really well. We use the brush because you, know, you don't want to use an air water syringe unless you're, you know, 100% sure there's no moisture in that line. Um, any moisture that gets on this restoration will be absorbed right away. And as it goes through the speed fire um, on the fast cycle, 
if there is any moisture in this at all, the restoration would shatter. So again, I, I like it just with the brush. That tends to be more than enough in our practice, but you know, whatever works in yours is fine. And then we got to center it. So I like that the Speedfire oven is connected directly to my prime mill and to my other um, prime scan and Omnicams and things like that. I don't have to program any of this like you would with the CS4. It's just there. We select the patient's name, we select the tooth and we hit go. Um, this is going to always be centered occlusal side down. There is no mounting putty or anything like that with zirconia because there is going to be some shrinkage and we wouldn't want our margins to be resting against that firing pad because as the restoration shrinks, it may kind of drag against that margin. So we always have our margins up, occlusal side down. And then when this comes out, like Dawn said, it's going to be extremely hot um, and it's going to look something like this, right? So this glowing orange restoration um, is very enticing to touch, but obviously don't touch this. We're going to let it cool off. It'll even tell you um, to let it cool for about two minutes or so. And then it's still probably too hot at that point. So I'd let it cool. You can set it on this little vent fan down in the front to help cool it off even faster. But here's the, uh, the effects of pre-polishing a knot. So same restoration milled twice. Um, the restoration on the right has been pre-polished with the blue Meisinger twist wheel. The restoration on the left obviously has not. If you look at that uh, kind of middle buckle cusp there, um, you'll see those striations, those horizontal lines. And I'm gonna show you the same restoration polished in a moment um, with the, with the post uh, centering polishing. And you're still gonna be able to see those lines in there. The patient may not feel it, um, but it's just something that I, I don't wanna see. So by having that blue Meisinger wheel, I can end up with a really nice polished restoration and I don't have a whole lot of work to do uh, post centering. So post centering, I'm just gonna use when I, and again, when I say I, the team is doing all this, we're gonna use the yellow, or the, the fine Meisinger twist wheel. Um, so for my entire zirconia polishing armamentarium, it's three burrs, um, the fine acrylic burr, lab burr, that, that's to remove the sprue, the blue to get the scratches out of the restoration and then the yellow to provide that high shine. And you know, zirconia polishes so well because it does have that metal as part of its you know, zirconia oxide. So what I find is sometimes people actually over polish zirconia. Um, the more you polish zirconia, it almost gets this like pearl-like effect and it just looks weird in the mouth. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't spend too much time getting it too shiny because then the patients are ever gonna be like, why does it look like this? We want it to look like a tooth. And your other option is to glaze. Uh, I don't really glaze anything. If you are gonna glaze, uh, you wanna do it more like the picture on the left, you are gonna mount it um, with some putty because we're not gonna have any more size change um, when this is fired again. And you wanna do a light misting. Um, this is in Denko spray glaze. Uh, I like it because it can be used on a number of different materials, whether it's glass ceramics like Emacs, um, you know, Seltra, Tessera, those can all use that kind of uh, spray glaze, but you can also use it on zirconia. You can use it even on some of the Lucite and Feldspathic ceramics too, if you want. But what we don't want to see is the picture on the right. So the picture on the right shows the spray glaze way too close to the restoration and being put on for too long. And you're getting this kind of runny appearance. That's going to end up with big globs of glaze um, either down at the margin or the surface is going to get this kind of orangey peel type texture. So nice misting like you see on the left, not kind of globbing up like you see on the right. And then here's the difference that I talked about a little bit earlier when Dawn was asking me about shade. So um, the restoration on the right was pre-polished and this is the one we saw earlier with those scratches and then it was glazed. And then the same restoration on the left was just polished. And I don't know really why there seems to be this phenomenon with zirconia when it's glazed, but I almost always see this where it's about a half shade lighter. Same block here, same A2 shade, but the glazed one just looks, just looks brighter to me. Um, in the middle of the restoration here, you can still see these horizontal striations. And these are very difficult to get out once they're here and once it's centered. So even though this is nice and polished, I don't have this slick and smooth surface like I do here, just because the time wasn't spent on this left restoration to do that pre-polish step, which is um, ultra important. So what does this look like in the mouth? You know, how, do, how does this work in my practice? Well, you know, this is a, a standard presentation, right? A hygiene, bite wings, you're seeing, uh, you know, a large amalgam in number three that's failing um, with some recurrent decay on the distal. Um, obviously an older composite in two, you're looking at a LTE max on number four there and then a PFM on number five. And so, you know, we prep this away, we clean it up, we decide to use zirconia to be conservative. 
And here is the, you know, 3M zirconia delivered. So to me, I mean, I think the vitality of it is right on par with the LTE Max next door. I don't see it looking opaque like we used to with those 3Y or those really what we consider high strength type of zirconias that were so opaque. Um, I think the translucency here is nice and for a posterior it looks great. I think it does look more vital than that PFM that I have on number five. So, you know, again, I, I'm very comfortable using this in premolars and molar areas. I don't know that these high strength zirconias are my go-tos for the anterior, maybe for some bridges, depending on the scenario. But most of the time, I, this is relegated to premolars and molars for me. But, you know, the other thing that I want to talk about a little bit is the Reliax universal cement that we, we, we touched on briefly. Um, I always had a difficult time with the previous 3M product, which was Reliax Ultimate. One, it set up very quickly and I had a hard time cleaning it. But two, it didn't have the radio opacity that the new Reliance Universal has. And so I always take post-op bite wings anytime we deliver a crown, an inlay, a quadrant, whatever, um, to look for cement. And that probably makes Don happy as a hygienist, so you're not seeing all this stuff come back on recall. But it's way easier to get this cement clean day of, patients numb, and you know the cement hasn't been sitting there for months until they come back. So now with the Reliance Universal, I have this radio opacity. You can see it there interproximally. I mean, the margins of the zirconia crown look great. They're sealed and fine, but now I can actually check for cleanup. So when my assistant sees something like that on the post-op bite wing, she knows to go in, clean everything up, and now we can see that, that that's all off the tissue and has cleaned up quite well. You know, and this was another case that we did with CDOCs, um, which uh, Don mentioned, I am a KOL and a visiting faculty there in, in Scottsdale. But um, when you look at this um, patient, that is a pink uh, sparkle occlusal composite in 29, by the way, patient requested when I had to do an occlusal there to have it done in pink, which we do have in the office. So um, that's not food or anything stuck there. But she had a, you know, an old uh, zirconia crown on number 31 and was always having problems around that tissue where that margin was overextended on the distal. And I think this is just where CAD CAM dentistry and digital impressioning really kind of stands out. And the fact that we can now do this with zirconia makes life even easier. So, you know, we remove the preparation or remove the existing restoration and then finalize our preparation. And you see that tissue again on the distal, just red and kind of angry from that overhanging margin. Um, and then we're going to clean it up and isolate it. And I'm always surprised. I really like 3M's retraction paste. Um, we placed this on and I think it would stop like an arterial bleed. It's really nice material to work with. Plus that small tip, it just fits right into a composite gun. You can really get it into the sulcus, but you can see we're subgingival pretty much all the way around this preparation. But if we take time to really polish these restorations, even that far subgingival, you can see this nice band of enamel all the way around the tooth, right? And so when I have enamel like that, this is why most of the time I'm not using conventional cementation. I like to try to bond to that and get some more strength there because I do have that nice band to work with. Um, so I would recommend if you're not polishing um, your margins, you know, after you use that kind of medium or, or coarse grit diamond burr, to go back with a fine diamond or even a lot of times I'll finish these margins with like a slow speed carbide to be able to move everything out of the way and be able to um, get a nice restoration. We're gonna apply the bonding agent, um, thin this out and then cement cleanup with the um, universal is a breeze. I mean, if you look at this, big chunks coming off, we're not hacking this stuff off, cleans up extremely well. And same deal, you can see kind of that interproximal cement here on the mesial, we got it cleaned up in the second photo, um, but you see the margin now, right? Because I didn't have to guess where the margin was, the lab guy wasn't guessing where the margin was. I was able to do this in practice and have a really nice margin uh, and that tissue on the disc will be much healthier. And you know, here again is our kind of pre-operative and post-operative presentations. I think these look great. You know, they're, they're not that opaque, they're very translucent compared to the old school zirconias. And this restoration obviously should be in service for, for many years to come. So, you know, I was happy to do the presentation today. I, you know, know this isn't live. So normally we'd have Q and A. Um, I'm not sure if Dawn has anything she wants to add at the end. You have the webinar email address here. So you're always welcome to reach out to Henry Shine. They have my contact address as well. Um, you can also find me on like Instagram, Michael Snyder DMD. You can message me there. We post cases and things all the time. So feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to help. And not sure if you have anything you want to add, Don. 
think one of the things that you were saying was just really about the ease of cleanup and cement that can be left behind. You know, and as a hygienist, the havoc that it can cause the tissue over months from when the restoration was done to when you're actually being seen in the recare, you know, and trying to get that out as a hygienist, like you can't scale that off. No. You know, so, you know, sometimes you get lucky, the cabotron tip will, will pop it out, but it's not getting a smooth surface. So a lot of times, you know, this is a really ideal thing to consider when you're selecting materials that the ease of cleanup, that it's not affecting the patient's gingival health down the line. No, I couldn't agree more. And I, and I like their family of products. So, you know, I try to work that way where, you know, I, I'm using their bond and their cement together. I don't like working with one company's bonding agent and another company, company's cement because those aren't tested that way. So I think the more we can stay streamlined and keep everything in the same family, the, the better it works. I agree with that. And then the support that you're getting from the manufacturers as well. I agree. We need predictability in dentistry. There's enough unpredictable stuff every day. So if I can limit any other problems, we're always better off. That's so I'll say thank you to Adam for hosting. Um, and if there is any more comments or questions, I know Don and I are always available to reach out to. So feel free. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Dr. Snyder. And I want to thank everyone for joining in to our webinar today. I hope it was beneficial and that we see you in future series coming up um, throughout the month of October and November. Enjoy. Bye, guys. Thank you, Don and Dr. Snyder, for your time tonight. Great presentation. And of course, thank you to 3M for sponsoring tonight's webinar. If anyone does have additional questions on this topic, please feel free to email us at webinars at henryshine.com. I would also like to note that the recording of this webinar will be emailed to everyone within one week of tonight. Thanks for joining us and have a great evening.